In this video, I want to talk about one lesson I learned having a drink with Gary V last night. It's 5.30 a.m., about to get in the cold plunge. Let's get cold. You know the drill, always dunk. There we go. So last night, I got together with a legend, Gary Vaynerchuk, better known as Gary V. I had never met him, uh, you know, one-on-one -on -one before and had the opportunity to do so. He had reached out, we got connected and got together. And I wanna share one learning from the hour that we spent together. He said you have to love being in the dirt. Now, what does that mean? We were talking about how he's had really like a 15 to 20 year longevity period as a creator, as someone that has their face out there, that's putting things out there, and how he's seen so many people come and go, flashes in the pan, grow and then burn out and grow and then burn out over and over and over again. And the, the insight I asked for was, you know, what has stood out? Like, what has allowed you to continue to thrive over the years while other people have done that? And he said, I love being in the dirt. And what does he mean by that? Well, being in the dirt is where you find the gold. But it's nasty. It's the stuff that you do early on when you're trying to make it that... Somewhere along the way, when people start to experience success, they stop doing. It's the things like interacting with your true fans. It's the things like doing the raw, real, authentic thing. It's the things like actually talking to people, actually interacting with customers, actually interacting with your employees. It's the things that you start to feel like I'm too good for this. Now I'm the CEO, quote unquote. Oh, now I'm, you know, now I've got millions of followers, so I don't need to do the basics anymore because now I'm above that. And what he said is his secret was he never got too big for the dirt. He never got away from being in the dirt. He was never in the skybox was the way he said it. There's a lot of successful people who achieve that success and then they go up into the skybox and they're too far removed from what's actually happening in the ground, in the dirt, to continue to achieve, to continue to excel. Now on rare occasions, they've reached the skybox because they've achieved so much wealth and success that it doesn't matter. They don't need to be in the dirt and they can just coast. But if you wanna build something lasting, you gotta love being in the dirt and you gotta stay in the dirt. It's really, by the way, how I thought about YouTube starting from scratch on something, being willing to be in the dirt. I didn't have that phrase yet in my mind, but it's so accurate for how I think about pursuing things in life that you just have to be willing to do those things that don't scale. There's this uh, story that I love about the New Zealand All Blacks, the famous rugby team, and how the captains of the team, the best players, are the ones that sweep the sheds, that clean the locker room after their big matches. And the whole idea is that you should never be too big to do the small. You can never get too high to be crawling in the dirt, to do the things that matter, those important things on the ground, because that's where you find the gold. Audience question today was from Van C. And he asked about a bad habit that I have or had and how I overcame it. My number one bad habit, which I know a lot of people will resonate with, that I had for all of my youth and through my 20s, really until I was 30, was comparing myself to others. Constantly, constantly. Everything for me was about a comparison to other people. Envy, jealousy, all the bad things that come from that. Seeing other people's lives, wishing I could have that. Seeing other people achieving success, wishing I could have that. And, you know, for overcoming it, the biggest thing for me was trying to change from defaulting to envy or jealousy to 
flipping the script and defaulting to curiosity. So when I started to feel that pang of envy or that jealousy or whatever it was that was creeping in, I would flip a switch in my mind and say, okay, this person has done something incredible. What can I learn from them? Turn to curiosity rather than envy. I don't need, I don't want their life because you have to want to trade lives with them in every regard, which I don't want. But what can I learn from what they've done? So if I see someone whose business success is starting to invoke envy or jealousy, well, what can I learn from their experience? What did they do differently? How can I learn from that and embrace that in my life? That was one bad habit that I've completely turned off. As I've gotten older, as I've gotten more secure with myself, and that curiosity, that flip, actually has led to me getting a lot of those things that I previously would have been envious or jealous about. So think about that. If you're someone that has wrestled with those bouts of envy or jealousy, the comparison to others, it's a really bad habit because it makes you feel inadequate. It makes you feel like you're not doing enough or that you're not enough. Flip the script, switch to curiosity, and it'll really help you go far. One other thing that's come up in a lot of the audience questions is how I deal with the kind of anxiety of having routines when you fall off them. This morning is a good example of this. You can see it's much lighter out behind me. It's about 5.45 or 5.30 versus my normal 4.15, 4.30 in here. You know, I went out for this drink last night with, with Gary V and uh, you're a taker on schedules <laughs> when you want to meet with someone uh, that you really admire so he wanted to do a little bit later so obviously I said yes and my biggest thing is you got to be able to just be dynamic I knew that if I had a drink with him at 7 30 and I was going to get home late I wasn't going to be asleep until probably 10 30 well in my younger days I probably would have just grinded and woken up at four like normal and just gotten much less sleep but I know I've got a really hard track workout today, I've got a tough workout, I've got to do some writing. I want to make sure that I'm well rested and that I feel good. So push back the wake up schedule, adjust the morning a little bit, don't stress about it. Get back on the routine tonight, back into the early morning wake up tomorrow. That's the biggest thing. You have to learn to just not be so hard on yourself when you need to adjust off the schedule. Now that doesn't mean being disciplined when you just don't feel like it. So. It's different if I'm like going to bed at my normal time and saying, oh, I'm tired, I, I just don't really feel like it, I don't think I'm gonna wake up early tomorrow. I need to be able to override that one because that's just in my mind. But the one that's actually real, going out with someone I admire, gonna learn, I'm probably gonna have my mind spinning after it, reflecting on it. You have to learn to roll with the punches on those and just be dynamic, be nimble, and never let your routines get in the way of your overall success and forward progress. Like if I had tried to stick to my normal routine, probably would have hurt my workouts today, which is really the ultimate goal of the routine in the first place is to set me up for success in the things that I'm doing. So something to think about for all of you out there. Hopefully that helps. And again, back to that piece of Gary Vee advice for all of you. You got to love being in the dirt. You got to love it. Whatever that dirt is for you in your life, don't lose sight of it. If you want to keep achieving lasting, durable, sustainable success, sustainable fulfillment, you got to love the dirt. That's all for today. Keep leaving the questions in the comments. I'll keep answering them. You'll love some of my other cold wisdom videos, day in the life, vlogs, routines, everything, which you can find here. And as always, until next time, let's get cold.